self gibberish, F stands for fantasy. You get a lot of words, you try to make them work, what do you get? You take the letter M, then you add a stupid N, what do you get? Um, how can I make it plainer to you? What kind of language do you use? Or do you know what I mean when I say... Uh, um, this week, F for fantasy. Hulk the Slayer. Scanlon the Barbarian. Tommy and the Dread Steam Engine. These are just few names from the Fantasy Hall of Fame. It's time now to put on your cloak of invisibility, buckle on the magic sword of Elrond, and defy the drone hordes of Scanlon by gazing into the magic mirror of fate and joining with us in a journey into the fantasy world of Alberto Illustrious Paranoias. You see, Doctor, I, I just don't know what's going on. I feel as if I'm under this amazing strain and I, I'm really worried I might be about to crack up. You see, Doctor, I keep having these really bizarre fantasies. Well, that's why I come to see you. I thought you might be able to help. Sorry, just trying to remember where Albania is. What about me? What about my fantasies? Ah, I'm afraid I just don't see them myself. Um, anyway, how can I be expected to help you if you won't tell me what they are? Well, you haven't given me a chance to yet. A bit paranoid, isn't it? Why don't you lie back, relax, tell me all about them. Well, it all started the other day at work. Morning, Gannis. Oh, morning, Mr. Newton. Would you like a cup of coffee? How are you today? It's funny you should ask that, Janice. I feel a bit peculiar. Oh, don't I... talk to me about feeling peculiar. Oh, I don't know how I managed to get in this morning. The pain was so bad. Only I thought, no, Mr. Newton needs me. I mean, just because I've had a heart attack and my hair looks such a mess because the lorry ran me over on the way into work doesn't mean I can shirk my responsibilities and take the morning off. <coughs> <coughs> No, I can go for the operation on my lungs during my lunch hour. Oh, don't worry about me, Mr. Newton. I'll just sit here and suffer in silence. No, how do you say you were feeling? All right, Janice. Doesn't seem very important anymore. You might be wrong on this, but I don't quite see what was so unusual about that. Well, I don't work in an office, and I haven't got a secretary. Hmm. I see why that would worry you a bit. I mean, as far as fantasies go, it wasn't very, shall we say, fantastic. For instance, have you ever had a fantasy like this? Who disturbs the peace of Nograd blood axe? Tis I, Freya Greyroot. And maiden of the sacred temple of Asgard. Will thou see us the first of thy supplicants, sir? I. Where is the human? Well. Well, he's hanging around over there, sir. <laughs> Yes, thou want of me, mortal. Oh, you see, I've got this shooting pain in both shoulders. Freya, fetch me my sterilized battle axe. Oh, she can't come. She's going to get you a nice piece of cob for your tea, sir. No, thou blithering battery! Oh, I wish you'd stop chucking those uh, thunderbolts about. Look, you see, don't worry on my account, you know. Aspirin will do. Housewives, are you tired of the same old hubby? Do you ever dream of holding a real man in your arms? Well, now you can have your fantasy come true with new improved spray-on Instaman. Just one touch of Instaman and we can change this into this. And remember, housewives, Instaman comes in three unique personalities. Son of the Desert, Valentino Vapor, Hoggo the Stone Age Man in a handy can, or our plain old Mr. Magnificent Mist. 
So, don't forget, housewives, when you want to change this... Hello, dear, what a boring day, but first of all, the bus were on time. ...into this... Darling, your eyes, they shine like two cameras oops in the moonlight. Sick of your man, just pick up a can of Fenton's Finster Man. Fenton's when you fancy the change. <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever had a fantasy like that. Ah, there you are. Treatment working, you look a lot sicker already. All right, say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah, that's no good. Let's try something else, shall we? Here we go. Ow! Oh! Ah, oh! oh, fine oh. voice is in great shape. Pity about that nasty oh. bruise on your elbow, though. No. Morning, Mrs. Trotter. Oh, hello, love. How is it now? Oh, only middling, Mrs. T. Is it, love? Never mind. What can I do you for? Uh, I'd like a bag of peanut brittle, please, Mrs. Trotter. Bag of peanut brittle coming right up, my favourite boy. Uh, there you are, love. Yeah. Mm, hey, have you had that uh, bug that's going round there, Mr. Winthrop? Oh, no. Is it worth ordering one? No, 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 no. It's some kind of flu, love. Oh, well, I'm not sure exactly. Oh, uh, I'll have the mirror. The mirror, love. Oh, right. I felt a bit peaky the other night, but to put that down to it, sun getting at me meat paste. Meat paste? Meat right. paste. Oh, yes. You'd know about it if you had it. Oh, ho, ho. it strikes people in weird and mysterious ways. Oh, like a reach, do you mind? No, no, nothing like that at all. Apparently, the old screen said it. Mrs. Thatcher's little Marsh was the first one. Poor lad. Shut up! <laughs> What's it like? Oh, it's a nasty one. Apparently, you go sweaty and that. And then you start having these fantasies. The awful thing is you've got no control over them Ooh. whatsoever. One minute, you might be down the laundry, taking your washing well, out of the spin dryer. Powder. And the next thing you know, you're catching Jack Keel off. Scourge to the Spanish main. Main Spanish what? Oh, I don't know about that. All I know is that's what happens to you. Well, you think you're a pirate? Oh, not just a pirate. Hey. You know the Bolsheviks down at number 10? Oh, aye. Them with the three twins. The very same. Aye. Well, last Thursday they thought they were a slice loaf. The police found them down the supermarket trying to hide the butter. Oh, <laughs> half, half a pound. pound. Oh, and a slice loaf, love. Cob. Can't the doctor do anything? Oh, not till he comes out the park. Park? School sports day, love. Oh, no, 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 no. School's on holiday. No, he is the school sports day. Oh, so he says. Anyway, just before the egg and sp... Oh, half, half a dozen. dozen. He managed to say it only lasted four or five days. Oh, that's a long race. No, not the race, love. The fantasy flu. Oh, hello, Mrs. Reagan, love. How are you now? Mr. Mm -hmm. Winthrush. A lot, uh, mm. a lot better now, thank you, Mrs. Trotter. Good. I've just been to the chemist for me tablet. Oh, tablet, Ed or back. Liver. In last week's episode, Dr. Bill told staff nurse Wendy that he knew all about her affair with Professor McNaughton, senior lecturer on surgical ward three. In fact, he'd seen cheerful Dr. Tim in the arms of chief radiographer Carol Snippet. That wasn't her, that was young Dr. Bill, wasn't it? No, that's grumpy Dr. Lionel, I think. Look, it's not my fault. It's impossible to tell her though when they've got those stupid masks on. Anyway, at the end of the last episode, as the dedicated members of Surgical Ward 3 battle to save the life of a brilliant young concert pianist, Dr. Bill said... His heart! It's stopped! Oh, well, I did everything I could. Come on. We know, Professor. You were brilliant. Hang on, hang on. It wasn't his heart, it was my watch. <laughs> Quick, everybody, there's still time. Come on. What's wrong with him, Professor? I don't know. He's covered in a sheet. Oh, eh? Hey. Oh, he's not so well, ma'am. No. If my diagnosis is correct, he's just the first of many patients we'll be having to deal with. What? You mean? I. But. I know. Oh, if this patient has fantasy flu, he should be in an isolation ward. We can't run the risk of being infected ourselves, oh. Professor McNaughton. If you catch it, it could be weeks, months before you're well enough to work again. Dr. Bill is right, Professor. If you catch a fantasy flu, the results could be catastrophic. I know that as well as you or I. Don't you think I'm aware of the risks I'm running operating on this patient? But when I became a doctor, I, I also took an oath. I am but a simple surgeon. Oh, no, no, no. You're brilliant. Say 
educated. And amazingly rich. Aye, yeah, well, I'm not just a brilliantly dedicated, amazingly rich, but simple surgeon, which is why I've got to operate to save this poor lad's life if he's going to win any more medals for sprinting. Uh, doctor? Yeah, I... He's a concert pianist, sir. Oh, I'll be a buttered barn cake. Never mind, we can still do something. Come on, nurse. Brady, Neville. Scalpel, forceps, swab, sutures, deck of cards, magic wand. Magic wand? Magic wand. You're going to like this. Not a lot, but you're going to like it. Now, where did I put that flipping rabbit? Oh, no. He's been infected. The fantasy flew made him think he's Paul Daniels. Say Oh, no, it's not. It's magic. <laughs> oh, my God. She's caught a dose as well. What'll happen now that Professor Mark Norton's got the fantasy flu? Can Dr. Bill cure him before it's too late? Does he even want to? Will staff nurse Wendy hang up her thermometer for a pair of star-spangled tights? Don't miss next week's exciting episode, Pick a Scalpel, Any Scalpel, when we invite you to follow up a bedpan and follow the thrilling adventures of Surgical Ward 3.